Hello folks, Nicholas here. Thought I'd give you a quick tour of my allotment. It's February the 28th, 2023, so we reached the end of February, so really it is still winter, so just uh, thought I'd let you know how it's progressing here. Uh, I'll give you a little tour. Uh, here we are. Thought I'd start here. Uh, as you can see, obviously it's winter time, so there's not a great deal going on. Primroses have been in there about three years, they keep coming back, they're lovely. Little cherry tree, just looks like a twig, but um, soon that will be flowering. I don't, uh, it's cherry trees, when they come into blossom, they're just so beautiful. So hopeful as well, they're just uh, after a long winter of darkness and not much life, it just gives a... Uh, Lovely feeling inside, you know, it's a promise of new life. It's brilliant. Uh, these are my raised beds, so roughly a third of my allotment, I guess, is now no dig. So I started off with these raised beds, um, put some cardboard down to suppress any weed growth, and then basically filled them with compost. And I started off with two six inch beds but in hindsight I think you don't need that much compost really four inches is enough some people would even argue that um, you don't really need a frame to contain your compost maybe initially but after it's settled you can it's almost self-supporting so you don't really need it and some people would also argue that create a framework or a raised bed helps give little hidey places for slugs and nasty creepy crawlies that would be eating our seedlings and vegetables. So anyway, I haven't really suffered with slug problems, but uh, they're all, all the woodwork's good, there's no, it's no rot, so I think that also helps. Yeah, bed number one. As you can see, there's nothing much in there. Uh, over here, we have some ruby chard that I planted last year and it's uh, survived the winter and it's come back again. It's starting to come into leaf. Should be looking forward to eating some nice fresh greens. This end I planted some parsnip seed or sown some parsnip seed. So I sowed those a couple of weeks ago. We can plant or sow parsnip seed in February. Uh, this bed here is for asparagus so I grew some asparagus from seed last year a tiny little black peppercorn sized seeds and I wasn't really expecting too much because as I've read that asparagus can take a long time three years before you're picking your first crop and that's from crowns and these are obviously from seeds but I was given the seeds and uh, I planted them and within uh, a few weeks they had uh, shot up little spears. The spears turned into these beautiful full fern-like foliage. They're really, really attractive. And um, end of the year I planted them out in this bed. Um, and we just have to see how it goes. I did initially find in some of the pots when I transplanted them snail eggs. Um, <laughs> so hopefully the snails haven't scoffed all the crowns and um, also I think a good tip for asparagus which I realised afterwards is to apply a liberal um, sprinkling of salt round each crown and I think that was also a way to help put off the slugs and snails from eating the, the crowns I did put some on but hopefully I wasn't too late we shall have to wait and see Bed number three is empty. This is my compost. Uh, it's a mixture of bought compost. There's a local farm up at Dunkerswell and they sell uh, compost which is made from recycled household waste I believe and they sell it at £2 a bag which is very reasonable so nearly all of the compost in these raised beds is from there. But this year I've also been using some of my own compost which comes from my chicken pen so um, in order to keep the chickens dry and to stop the mud 
I uh, bought in a load of wood chip basically and over the last three or four years it's rotted down quite well and it's obviously mixed with chicken poo so it makes a really good compost. Uh, I sieved it, it's quite coarse so I have sieved it and uh, we shall see how it goes this year with that. This bed here, as you can see, is broad beans, aqua dulce. I planted them in the autumn, late autumn, and uh, yeah, they're up. They're looking good and healthy. I'm really pleased. Unfortunately, my neighbour, he, because uh, we had such a sort of mild autumn, he planted his very early. It almost looked like it might flower and pod. But I think they were too far advanced. I don't know if you can just see them over there, those brown twig-like things. Well, basically the cold, as you know, it's quite cold this year. We had uh, minus seven at one time here in Devon and snow. So basically it's killed them. I'm pleased I planted mine a little bit later. You can never tell. It's always a bit of a lottery with planting and timings. There's bed number five. And uh, here we have garlic. These first two rows here are a mixture of soft and hard neck garlic. Um, it stores well. It's, uh, um, a good crop. Last year, because it was so dry, the garlic didn't really um, mature or size up. It wasn't just the heat actually, I think it was uh, rust, which is an airborne fungus. It settles on the leaves and basically it really stunts the growing. So I'd, uh, I still use them, but they were very small. Some of the clothes were the size of a peanut, if you can imagine. That's a bloody fiddly job. Because you have to do three or four times as many. Uh, this here is, it looks like a leek, but it's not. It's elephant garlic. I was given a bulb of elephant garlic by my neighbour down there, Terry, initially, um, which I planted, and I've been reusing those for a couple of years. So, delicious roasted vegetable. Just put them in the oven, roast them, and they come very sweet. Lovely, lovely vegetable. Over here we have um, two rows of winter onions. There's a mixture of red and yellow. Um, I did plant some last year in the raised bed number two, which is the high one, and um, I wasn't too impressed with them really. I think, uh, I don't know why, for what reason, but they tended to nearly all bolt and try to produce flowers. Uh, we still use them, but when they go to seed like that, they don't store very well. They become soft in the middle. And uh, next to it here, I have planted some shallot, shallot bulbs. Um, and for those of you that don't know about shallots, they're uh, onion family. And you plant the single bulb, and instead of actually growing, they divide and subdivide. So. For each bulb that you plant, you perhaps will get seven or eight bulbs. Um, I just thought I'd give them a try. I've never really grown them before. Uh, it's all an experiment. Um, here's where I planted my leeks. As after broad, broad beans last year, actually, so once the broad beans came out, I planted the leeks. Uh, uh, they've Limited success, so uh, what we do have is very tasty, very sweet, but they are relatively small. Um, just such a difficult growing season last year. Uh, not just for me, but for everyone. When I look around there at some of my neighbours, some people tend to grow leeks that are really big. I think that might be a variety uh, difference. So, anyway, these are okay, I'm quite happy with them. They're all right. Uh, we shall see. Here we have my a little enclosure. 
I use it for brassicas because it helps keep the butterflies and the birds out. But on the downside, it tends to harbour or create a wonderful environment for uh, whitefly. It's, um, I just spray them with washing up liquid. I don't, I don't use any pesticides. I'm trying to avoid it. Um, that's a. It's like a cauliflower, but it's not a cauliflower, and I can't remember what they're called. But really pretty. Uh, there's nothing really much going on there at the moment. These cabbages I planted last year in the middle of the summer and I expected them to really mature by the end of the year but again it was nothing really happened they just sort of stayed small but they are starting to go now and the dark the dark leafy ones here are autumn king and the lighter coloured brassicas there are collies so, uh, we'll just see how it goes shall we um, in this area I had potatoes last year so I've uh, turned that over with a fork Obviously, uh, as you can see I'm not doing all no dig I'm not totally committed but uh, this year in that area I plan to plant sweet corn and squash and maybe some climbing beans so they call those the three sisters I believe where this plank is, underneath there is my runner bean trench. So I dug a trench, filled it full of newspaper and compost material in order to create a, a little bit of a sump to hold moisture because runner beans and that family are marsh plants. They like a nice moist soil. And obviously last year, because it was so dry, not many people had success with runner beans, including me. Uh, and again, I think it's timing. I think, uh, you know, some people were lucky and caught the timing right and were quite successful, but most of us had plenty of failures. This is my uh, single apple tree. It's been the second year now, and it didn't produce any fruit last year, so fingers crossed we may get some results. I pruned it in the autumn, cut back some of the more straggly air branches. You know, I'm not an expert, but this is my allotment and I really enjoy being here. It's a very peaceful place. For instance, you know, I'm here up on my own. There's no one here. It's lovely. It's a lovely place to come and chillax. I thought I'd put a bench here later on. And uh, the bulbs that I've removed from that bed, I'll talk about that in a minute, which are dahlias and gladys are going to go here. I also planted some marigolds in the greenhouse, so I'm going to intersperse all my crops with marigolds. I think carrots particularly and parsnips and asparagus actually do benefit from companion planting with marigolds. The scent of the marigold puts off the pests or disguises the smell of the, especially the carrots against carrot fly. So. Yeah, companion planting it's called. Rhubarb's coming on, all right. That's quite good down there. We shed. Uh, water butts, compost bins. The Victoria plum, that is. Showing signs of new growth and buds. Now this bed is uh, my nemesis. <sighs> this is where I grow bindweed. Yeah, I've got a bindweed problem. I think it's in the path here. It's also very deep so this has been uh, this will be the third year of trying to get rid of it. Uh, first year I dug it over twice. I thought I got everything out. It grew back. But by that time I planted some bulbs, flower bulbs, uh, gladdies and dahlias and some squash. I couldn't really disturb the soil so every time I saw it showing a leaf I would uh, basically dig out as much of it as possible with a small fork. 
or a knife um, but it just kept coming it kept coming this year I've just about had enough so I've gone at it with a fork and I've pulled tons of root out oh god anyone knows any way to get rid of it I don't think there is a way except persistence but I've dug loads of root out of there so this year I might not plant anything that's going to be in for any long a long time I thought maybe plant some early spuds in there I've got some rocket chitting in the garage I thought I might bung them in because they'll be in and out by sort of midsummer. so then I, it gets another dig and then I just might see where I go from there bindweed's horrible I've dug it so deeply and I've been down 18 inches and still finding roots so it's down in the subsoil and also in a pass that chucks roots underneath uh, my neighbour Amanda she's been having the same problem on this side um, so she's been combating that I think I do that I don't know I don't know lots of hard work get a bulldozer and take the path up I can't do that <coughs> these are artichoke glow butter chokes uh, second year actually they look like they're coming back a uh, little primrose and my cherry tree that I spoke about earlier oh yeah this is uh, my allotment at the moment end of February I'll do another vlog in maybe a month or two and you can see if or how it has progressed, fingers crossed. So, yeah, so that's the end of my little vlog of my allotment in February. I uh, hope you like it. If you do, try subscribing. Comments are always welcome. Talk to me, I don't bite. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.